There we go. Alright, there we go. There's one to cast up, and I'm gonna bring my bait over the oyster mounds. The reason there's a bite there. Alright, I'm on. Good morning all, it's a late morning start out here on the river with my, my buddy and we're gonna get after some some of the inshore species here, some flounder, some redfish and some sea trout. It's gonna be a little too late for some top water action unfortunately, but uh, we just netted a bunch of uh, perfect size finger mullet and uh, we're gonna try and fish them live and uh, maybe cut them up. The tide is falling and it's about to bottom out here in the next 30 or so minutes and then uh, so we'll be fishing mostly the incoming low tide so thanks for watching okay right away because I have it I'm gonna put on live mullet it is really shallow in there so I'm trying to stay back at this tide they're in here somewhere these redfish big redfish just shot out right there and right there damn I cast a lot right here how do they not uh, eat the ability is like six feet Holy crap. I thought that was a log, but it was a fish that followed all the way in and then at the very end shot out and then it was just a big mud trail that looked like a log. <laughs> what the? Ah. Oh. I reeled it in too fast. There we go. A lot of redfish here. There we go. Pretty guy. All right. Yes, sir. That's a good one right there, guys. It's a pretty fish. Just getting started. It's midday, so it's gonna be. It's been just a little bit slower than the last few trips, but uh, we're definitely gonna get, be getting into them now that the current's starting to move a little bit. Go. All right, guys. See if I can pick off another one. Then I'm gonna move on to a different spot. There's one. That feels like a flounder to me, guys. Just like it stays down and then it has like little quick head shakes, fast little head shakes. That's how I know it's a flounder. It's almost like a shiver. And you can feel that when you're reeling them in sometimes. And that's how I know it's a, it's a flounder. That and, and the way that they're not just running um, horizontally like a redfish would. Looks like the camera just died, but uh, here's another redfish, about a slot red, I'm gonna release it. All right, guys, I just went back and grabbed my camera. Extra batteries and there's a bike there. All right, I'm on. Sweet. Feels like a good red right there. All right. Nice. Nice. Look at that guy. Stand up here so I can get a better look at him. Look at him. Woo! Slacking my line, slacking my line. Coming in. Under the boat. Put my pedals up so he doesn't get stuck in them. I've done that before, that sucks. Ooh, baby! Sweet! Look at that fish. Resisting this net at all costs here, dude. That one's really strong. Look at that red fish. Dunk. Right here, guys. Pretty fish. I don't know if it has two spots on that side. No, it doesn't. I'm going to show off this prettier side here blessed to be out and I uh, appreciate everybody watching so I'm really happy that uh, my channel's taken off and, and uh, I'm getting a lot of messages that you guys are liking the content. Unbelievable. Let's catch another one guys. Woo! 
bunch of bait up in there in that pocket, but I think it's still too shallow. I'm not gonna go all the way in there. So it's important to, uh, to study areas. If you go to the same area often, uh, make sure you're studying it, or you can study it on a, like a, a Google map or whatnot. A grass point like that um, doesn't always, but, and I know that particular oyster mound has, has a, like a four foot drop off in front of it. So that's a, a great place to, to cast to especially on like a low tide. 99.9% .9 of the time, guys, all you're gonna need is a paddle tail on a jig head for inshore fishing. This is three inches, four inches. It's pretty much the same. I go with three inches most of the time, and I think Z-Man is just the superior bait. It's more durable, and also I like how just kind of um, it floats and finessey it, it can be. Um, this is a 3 8 ounce um, trout eye jig head. Um, the only thing you can need to change is maybe the weight. Go with a real lightweight and shallow water in low current and a heavier current and deeper water you're gonna you're gonna go with a, a a bigger jig head the only thing on that note is um for various reasons you might be wanting to fish um different parts of the water call i tend to fish really fast um kind of feel like fish are there they're not um see i just got hit right there it's more than likely that was a trout and where there's one trout, there's many. So I'm gonna cast right back there again. And that's why I fish fast. There we go. All right. There it is, there's the trout I was talking about. I just cast to that spot, felt a bump. I knew that that was a trout bump because of its location in the middle, in the water column, off the bank, away from structure, reeling kind of quick, uh, mid column and uh, cast right back there and I just got a, a nice thump from a, a trout right away. Areas I want to point out, on this tide it's not really easy to see, but there's two oyster mounts here. There's one here and there's one at the mouth of that little creek. Now this can be applied to anywhere. The tide and current is moving this way. It's moving over those humps and over those oyster mounts. So the fish are going to be on this back side of the oyster mounts feeding up over the bait fish that are coming over the oyster mounds. So I'm gonna position myself over here and I'm gonna cast up and I'm gonna bring my bait over the oyster mounds and so that the fish, so that the sea trout are gonna come up and ambush it. Also the left side and the right side. And that's a little bit more of a consideration on a lower tide where most of the current is going around the sides of the oyster mounds, not over the top of it. That trout was way up in there. Yeah. Uh, I got a bump board. Oh shit. Not bad. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's a real good one. Get your board. You think he's 16? Oh, he's over. That's a that's an 18 inch finder, man. Dang, I'm good. You at 18? Yes, sir. Nice. <laughs> nice, killer, man. Nice catch. Now I'm not gonna feel bad about catching the redfish right here. Uh huh? Now I'm not gonna feel bad about catching these redfish right here. Uh, <laughs> I took what? Just the next cast, right? Yep. It feels like a red, but then it was just like this very rapid head shakes. Yeah. Um, the red. It's a good red. Uh, uh, get out of that grass, my man. Don't be doing that. Oh, shoot. See, they, they like to go up in that grass and it's hard to pull them out sometimes with only 15 pound braid. He, he might have already gotten me. Ah, I got him out. So I like this reverse drive, man. Hands free reverse drive. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, but it's just barely over slot. I haven't even been measuring them just because it's extra time out of the water. 
for a little bit of a grind we're still catching and the flounder i was just kind of trolling my uh my bait there going from one spot to another and went through some shallow area and it just kind of dragging on the bottom happened to uh entice this little guy i bet it's 15 and a half my guess is 15 and a half i bet it's not going to make the cut it's 15. that was anticlimactic There we are. Came off. Dang. Dang. It's a very likely spot though, right there with all that grass in the water deeper. See if there's another one there. Oh, there's a tap. There we go. Got him. Small trout. Oop, lip. It's a cutie. Guys, little tiny trout. The thing is about the size of that lure I was using. Guys, this is the, uh, the carnage I'm dealing with today with these puffer fish. Just taking off my tails every single time perfect little bite marks like a cookie cutter look at that it's getting expensive all right so i think that's it guys it was a hot day middle of the day but uh you know we did all right just using the tactics where we're hitting the grasses and the incoming tide and continuing to pound the bank we really didn't use any cut bait even though we had that live bait um, we just used the three inch paddle tail and we continued to hit that that grass line and work the oyster mounds in the area. Appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks all.